Are you ready to design an awesome WordPress site? This is the Traveling Crew site, and I'm going to teach you step by step how to build a site just like this one. You're going to learn all the ins and outs of these awesome features and how to design a site of your own. So let's get started. So let's go through what we're going to do. First things first, we're going to set up our hosting and domain name with HostGator. Then we're going to go ahead and install WordPress to your domain name. Then we're going to install a WordPress theme. The choice I'm going to use is Divi in this case. And then we're going to design and customize your WordPress site. So it's going to be really fun and I hope you're excited. And we're going to get started um, right now with signing up for HostGator. So you're just going to go to HostGator.com and you'll see that they offer a lot of great things. You're going to go to web hosting. Now web hosting plans are going to be exactly what you need. You can click the one that you'd like. Um, I'm really not going to use um, all their services so I'm just going to use the cheapest one in this case which is the hatchling plan and all I need is a single domain so that makes it really easy for me. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up with this one. Once you click sign up it brings you to this sign up page and the first thing you're going to do is find a domain. Mine is going to be the travelingcrew.com it's just the theme of my site and if it's available it will add it for you. It'll also give you options for other domain names, but you don't really need those. You can also get rid of domain privacy, which is an extra fee unless you don't want your information publicly shown on the Whois directory. Billing cycle wise, I'm just going to choose one month for this purpose, but you can choose any of these. Most people choose around 12 months, um, but again, I'm just going to do one month. Then of course I have to do a username, which um, I'm going to do the traveling crew, but that seems like it's too long, so I'm going to shorten it to the TC. Um, and then of course they also like to be extra secure, which is good, so they're going to ask for a security pin. I'm just going to do 8888, something really simple and easy to remember. Um, and then following this task, you have to enter your billing information. So for this video, I'm going to skip this part, but you have to enter it. I just don't want you to know my info. So after that, you're going to go to the additional services, and this is where you're going to click additional services if you want, but we don't really need them. So we're going to scroll down to the coupon code. This is where we're going to type in build path. That's your code to get a great discount on HostGator. And when you validate that code, um, as mine, in my case, I got $8.62 off, which is amazing. Uh, then I'm going to read through this, agree to it, and I'm going to check out. So super, super simple. And I'm just going to wait for the next page, um, whether you are using a credit card or PayPal. Once you pay, it's going to say thank you, and you're going to say you're welcome, and you're going to go ahead and navigate to your email where your information will be. So here we are at my email. This is information about my account. So um, this will be the information that logs me in to the back end of my website. So what I'll do is I'll use this link for the control panel and I'll go to that. And then I'll use the username that I've been given or made up. And so in this case, it will be the TC. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that or if you remember it, you can type it in. And then following that, you're going to type in your password or copy and paste in this case. They're going to give you a long, complicated password. So you're going to want to copy and paste that. And make sure you write it down and remember it. And now it's navigating us. Uh, we don't need this, so we can exit that and we can... We can say we're fine and this will be your C panel. This is where all the back end of your domain is going to happen. Um, there's a lot of complicated things on here that you probably will never use, but there's a lot of good things as well if you want to dive more into that in the future. But of course, in this tutorial, we're focusing on WordPress. So you can see right here, it says get started with WordPress. Just click that. That'll take you right where you need to be. It's called Quick Install, so you can see that this is going to allow you to install WordPress onto your site for free. Um, you can ignore these premium options. We want the free install, so we're going to go ahead and click Install, and it's going to bring up this form. Here in the drop-down is your domain that you just purchased. You're going to click on that, and then you're going to fill out basic information, what email you want to use for your website and for the information they're going to send you. You're going to do your title of your site, so mine is going to be The Traveling Crew. And then you're going to do 
the username again, so the TC or whatever you want it to be. Uh, I think you can skip these. Oh, whoops. Nope, looks like first name is required and last name is required. So in my case, I'll just write traveling crew as my name. Um, you can write your own name if you'd like. And then we're going to install. Um, you can ignore this part. They're trying to sell you themes. And then you'll see that your install is complete. It only took a second. <laughs> After that, just navigate to your email again. You'll have all this information um, right at your email. So it'll show you your URL and most importantly your password. Copy and paste that. And then you're going to go to the administrative URL. This is the login page. I'm going to show you something with this as well. So once you log in, um, you'll see that there it is, your dashboard. This is your WordPress site. I can't stress enough that to log in, you have to go to your domain slash wp-admin, not wordpress.com. People get a lot of confusion with that. So remember domain name slash wp-admin. That's how you get to your login page every time. So don't forget that. So now that you're on your dashboard here, I'm going to show you how to install your theme. That's the first thing you're going to want to do. If you go to appearance and then themes, this is um, how you're going to look for themes. So they offer a few free ones on here, but you're going to want to go to add new either at the top here or there's a big one on the side. And when you do that, you're going to see a bunch of other themes that WordPress is kind of promoting and showing you. Some are free, some are paid. But um, there's a million more on the internet than just the ones that WordPress shows. In fact, they're even better. So um, one of the sites I like to use, if you do want to purchase a theme, which the one we'll be using is a purchase theme, is themeforest.net. They have thousands of website templates on here for WordPress. So it's a great site. You can see it's about $59 is probably the most expensive um, for your theme, but it's totally worth it in the long run if you want your site to look professional. The theme we're going to be using though is called Divi, and this is by Elegant Themes, and it's actually one of my favorite themes of all time for the customization purposes. There's so much you can do, and it's so easy. You're going to see it's drag and drop. It's really simple. There's tons of modules, and you're just going to love it, and so that's why I'm kind of showing you this one because I love it so much, and I hope you will as well. With Elegant Themes, you can join um, their theme site, and it's only $69 a year for the basic one. That's the one I have, and it gives you all the themes that they have. And it's not just Divi, it's, there's 87 themes in total. So I'm totally not being paid to tell you this. I just love the Divi theme. It makes the $69 worth it. And you're going to be paying that much for almost for one theme, so might as well have 70 or more. So anyway, you're going to go to Upload. And once you do, you're going to have a zip format once you download your theme. And that's what you're going to be installing is the zip format of the theme. So I have it here on my desktop already. And so I'm going to click that and I'm going to go ahead and open it. And then it'll be installed. So I just have to wait a few seconds. And then once it's installed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to activate it. So here we are, this is my theme. It's right here, and now I can visit the site and show you the default page that it's on. Taking a minute here. Okay, so here's the default Divi page that you're gonna see. There's the logo of Divi, the basic Hello World post that they always have, and um, all the blog information. So you're probably used to seeing something similar if you've ever used WordPress. Now, whenever you're on the live site here, you can drop down to some shortcuts. Um, you'll go to the dashboard a lot. So I'm going to click that now, and that'll take you back to the dashboard of your site. Um, something important you got to do first off is change your permalinks. If you go to settings, um, general, I'll just show you real quick. This just shows you the general information of your site. So it's really simple, has your email, um, just basic, basic stuff. But what you need to focus on is the permalinks at the very bottom of the settings. And that's what's going to change your URLs in the URL um, location. So for, for instance, here it just gives you a weird, complicated one and a bunch of different options. You're going to do post name because that's going to take the page name and put it um, as the forward slash. So if it's about or blog, and you're going to save that. That's the best way to do it. 
And so once that's updated, then you're good to go and your site will look normal. <laughs> so great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you some of the customized features of this theme that you can do when customizing your site. So you go to Appearance and Customize and it's gonna bring up your live site as well as a toolbar with all these different customizations that you can do. Don't be overwhelmed, Divi has a lot of them. I'm gonna keep it really simple for you. So in general settings um, here, you're gonna have just a few options. You're gonna have site identity, layout settings, etc. Here is the site title, and here's the tagline. Let me just change my tagline to a blog about our travels. Um, and that'll just be really simple. I'll keep that the same. You can do a site icon if you want, but again, I'm gonna keep this really, really simple for you. If you go to layout, this will show you a lot of different options. I'm just gonna focus mainly on colors and fonts. So in this case, I'll leave it blue. I like the blue color, so we're just gonna keep that there. Then we're going to go to typography. This is where you can change sizes and everything. I'm going to start by just changing font. These will give you a bunch of Google fonts that you can use. I'm going to start with Montserrat. That's one of my favorites. And then I'm going to do the body as something, um, Cardo. Okay. So there we go. So that will be the style. And again, you can change different things, but I'm just going to keep it simple. Do the same colors, everything. And then background, you can ignore that one. All right, and then we go to header navigation. This is where we can change our navigation style. Um, I'm gonna keep mine at default, but you can change it around if you want and mess with it. Um, the menu bar, this is specific just to the menu bar. So for example, I wanna change my font, change my colors, but honestly, everything looks good. So I'm just gonna keep it the way that it is. I will show you there are some elements you can change if you go down to header elements. There's a search icon you can show or not show, same thing with social icons. Um, but I'm just going to leave it with the search icon and make it simple. So that's it for the header. Now for the footer, there's actually a ton of stuff you can do with the footer. The layout, you can change how many columns you want. This is if you use footer widgets. Um, I'm not going to use footer widgets, so I'm going to ignore that. There's also different elements you can change, um, basically show the social icons or not. You can change the widget colors, different things about the widgets. Again, we're not gonna use widgets in this tutorial. Then there's a menu you can also put in the footer, but we're not gonna use the menu either. So as far as the bottom bar, we are gonna use, that's this little bottom bar here. You can see it has the social icons, but I like the colors, so I'm gonna keep it the same. Now, the only other two things I'll worry about in this video is the static front page, and the menus. We need to create pages to actually use those. So I'm gonna save this and go ahead and go back to my dashboard and show you how to create pages. So if you go to pages and all pages, you'll see this is a list of pages you have. I just go ahead and delete the sample page. It's just that page you saw and we don't really need it. So now we're gonna go ahead and actually create our own pages. So you go to add new and it'll bring you to the back end of the page. And I'm gonna, of course, start with four basic pages. So the first one is home, and I'm going to publish that, and this is just gonna be a blank page. I just like to go through and write in all my pages before I start, just to be able to get everything organized. The other one I'm gonna do is um, an about page. Go ahead, go down and publish that. You can do as many pages as you want. These are just four basic pages that a lot of people have. I'm gonna add another one. This one will be blog. A lot of people have blogs on their site. I'm gonna publish this. And then add one more. Lastly is going to be a contact page because people need to know how to contact you. So I'm gonna put that in and I'm gonna go ahead and publish that. So now I have my four pages. So if we go back to um, appearance and customize, we're gonna show you how to put the static front page in. So you go to static front page and you do a static page. And then it'll list all your pages and of course you wanna click the home page, whatever your home page is gonna be. Now you can save that. You can also do a post page to be the blog page, but I'm not gonna do that because Divi actually has a special way of doing the blog. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and publish that. 
And there you have it. There is your home page, and there's also this ugly sidebar. We're going to get rid of that once we start designing, so don't worry. Um, and before we start the design process, we're going to go back, and I'm going to show you how to create the pages um, in a menu. So here are your pages. And now I'm going to go to Appearance, and then scroll down to Menus, and click that. And now it'll give you a menu that you want to create. So I'm going to name the menu, call it Main Menu. And then I'm going to go ahead and create that menu. And now I have this blank menu structure. And what I'm going to do is add all of these pages. You can check them or you can select all. And then add to menu. Now organize wise, I like the home to always be first. And then the about. And then the blog. And then the contact. So that's why I'm reorganizing it here. It's just a drag and drop. And then down here I'm going to click primary menu as my theme location. That's going to be in the main top menu bar. And then I'm going to save it. Now that my menu has been saved, I'm just going to go up and look at my live site real quick. Make sure it's there. And there it is, right in my header, all the pages that I wanted in order. And it looks great. And it'll be like that across my entire site. So now I want to go back and go to my dashboard. And if you go up to the left hand corner as you see me doing, um, it'll give you a list of all these different options that you can get shortcuts to. Now you'll probably use the dashboard most, so I'm going to go back to the dashboard and I'm going to change some of the theme options of Divi. So if you go to Divi and then theme options, this is where I'm going to do a lot of my customization if I want to get really into it. Now first things first, I want to put my logo in. That's really important. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my logo. It'll bring up a media library and you're going to go ahead and select files and it'll bring up your browser in your desktop. So here I'm going to do my logo which is saved to a folder and I'm going to open that and it's going to upload to my WordPress site. And now I can set it as my logo. So across my whole site that will be my logo. There is this thing called a fav icon and that's this little icon up here in the browser. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll leave the one that the HostGator gave us. And then there's all these other options. It can be quite overwhelming, but they're really cool if you want to look into them later. I'm just going to focus on simplicity. So here is the social icons that are going to be important to you. I don't need the RSS icon, and you can disable and enable any one you want. So it's really nice. Um, I'm going to leave the rest. And then this is where you write your URLs for those. So for example, in Facebook, if I want to try my Facebook, um, these little hash marks are just fillers so that it'll sh still show the icon, but it doesn't have the link. And then you have more and more options that you really don't need to worry about these um, to keep it simple and just get your site up. Okay, really important, after you've done everything you want to do, you go all the way down and you click Save Changes. And then a little check mark will pop up letting you know you saved everything. So now my logo is on my whole site. And there's a bunch of different options you can mess with. I'm not even going to touch them on this tutorial, but just so you know, you can do a ton of stuff with ads and SEO, and so this theme is really amazing. Now for plugins, before I forget, I always like to deactivate useless plugins. So for example, Mojo Marketplace, you can deactivate that. It's unnecessary. So you deactivate that, as well as this formidable one, also an unnecessary plugin. So if you go up and you can deactivate that one as well. And then I'm just going to go ahead and delete the Mojo Marketplace altogether. So you can delete that and then click yes. And I'm just going to show you one simple plugin you can go do and add. So you go to add new. And these are a bunch of different plugins. And oh, sorry. I'm used to uploading plugins and <laughs> not adding them. Okay, so um, to add new ones, you just search the plugin. This is the contact form 7 that I would love for you to add to your site. It's a really great contact form. Um, it's this one right here. You're going to install that. And then you're going to go ahead and activate it. Okay, now that's activated here. And I'll show you later how to use that. It's a really nice contact form plugin. But now we're going to go do the fun stuff. We're going to go to pages and we're going to start editing. So if you go to the first page you want to edit is probably your home page. So we're going to click edit there. And we're going to start and we're going to use the Divi Builder. So make sure you click that because that's how you're going to design this whole site. And it gives you this really nice crisp layout here. This all drag and drop. And so 
If you look, this is a standard section here. I'm going to actually use a full width section because that provides the full width banners that you see in a lot of sites. So here I'm going to delete that and now this purple one is my full width section. You might want to add a standard section and I'll show you how to do that, but right now we're going to focus on this. So when I click here, um, I can see I have all these different options, but for this purpose I'm going to use the full width header, which allows me to have an image and some text. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see this module has tons of different customization options, tons of different things you can do. So it's really awesome. First things first, I'm going to figure out what the title should be. So you could say welcome or hello. I think I'll have it say like, I don't know, uh, let's travel or something like that. So let's travel. Um, cool. And then the subheading, I can say what it is. So um, let's say here's a blog about our travels. Okay, so there's my title and subheading. You can read just what it tells you. It says, you know, if you want to change it to dark to light, what, um, I always want it to be centered. Full screen, I definitely want it to be full screen. That way you can see the whole image. You can add a button, so you can click yes here. And these are little scroll down buttons so that it makes it easier for people to know that you can scroll down. I'll just stick with the one it has. Then you can add actual buttons that kind of link people somewhere. So I'll add like a blog portion here and then I'll add the link to the blog, which I know will be easy because I changed my permalink. So I'll just copy this and then I'll know that it'll be forward slash blog. So I'll just paste that in there, forward slash blog. And that'll link them to my blog. And then as I scroll down, you could add a second button. Uh, I think I'm going to leave that alone. And then, of course, the image. So I'm going to upload an image. This brings you to the media library. I'm going to go to Upload Files up here. And then same thing as we did the logo. I'm going to select the files from my computer. And here I have a bunch of images. I'll use this one for the main image. And I'm going to go ahead and open it. Now, I've already optimized these for web. I suggest you do the same by saving them into a smaller format using Photoshop or something. Um, you can look up how to do that with whatever product you have for photos. So I'm going to set this image. And here it is. It's beautiful. Um, and, as you, and you probably would know this. The text will probably not show up very well. So this overlay is really good. It can overlay the image with a color. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to make it probably white and then make it a little bit transparent. That's what this little bar does. So if I pull it down a little bit, it'll be more of a lighter white. You can still see the image, not a solid color. So I'll leave it like that and see how it looks. And then there's some more options here. I'm just going to skip through these just to show you though. And then I'm going to go ahead and do advanced design settings, and that's where you can change everything. You can change the colors, the fonts. So I'm going to change the title color to be like a maybe a black or gray. And then you can change the title font. It'll default to the Montserrat anyway, but I'm just going to show you how it would look if you changed it. You can change the sizing to as big or as little as you want. I'm going to make it 50 right in between. And then you can just keep customizing. So it's really, really simple. It's really easy to customize everything that you want. And as you'll probably see here, I'm going to do a lot of trial and error. So I'm going to change this to gray already. <laughs> but um, I'm definitely going to go look at my site and probably change a couple things on it as I go. Again, these don't have to be changed, the font, but you can change them here if you want, if you don't want to use your default font. Here's the scroll down icon color. That's important. I want to change that to maybe the blue or white. Um, and that'll allow people to see that arrow that goes down, shows people where to go, and they can actually click on that. And then, of course, the button. You definitely want to style the button. Um, so here I can style the text color, the size. I'm going to do the color maybe, um, well, copy this gray so it matches. And then I can scroll down, click the color box again, and paste that color in. So now it'll match. Then you do the background color. So the background, we'll do the blue or the white. We'll try white. And then you can change the border width, um, border color. I mean, it goes on and on. I don't want to use an icon. I don't like icons 
on my buttons. And then you can add different hover. So that's when it hovers over the button. We can change it to blue or gray or white. That'll be the text. And then maybe I want the background color to be blue. And then hover border. Yeah, we'll just save it. Let's just see what it looks like now. You can go to preview changes before you even update. Um, and it'll, you can ignore this part as well unless you want to hide the navigation before scroll. And just showing you what it looks like back here. But I'll just go to preview because I don't even want to update yet. So as you can see, here's what I just did. And I don't love it. So now I know. I can go back and I can change it before I even update it. It's fully responsive. I wanted to show you that. And I'll be showing you that throughout the design process because that's really important. It'll look good on any screen size and you don't even have to do anything. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to go change this up a little bit. I don't really like the button very much. So let me go back and change some things on it. Now just a heads up, this little three bar thing, that's actually how you edit everything on Divi. So just so you know, that's why I keep clicking that if you haven't noticed. So let me just make some changes here. You can go ahead and just watch and follow along and I'll be quiet. All right, let's go ahead and preview what I just did. And like I said, it's a lot of trial and error, so I'm gonna preview a lot. Still got the button, it looks a little better, but now this is too dark and uh, yeah, I don't love it. So I think I'm gonna have to change it some more, but that's okay because it's a lot of trial and error when it comes to web design. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back and fix that and fix all these different issues. So again, you can follow along as I fix some of these things I didn't like so much and you can preview as many times as you want and just keep changing until you like what you've done. That's the best part of designing on WordPress. Okay, it's getting there. Like it looks a little better, a little lighter here. I just don't think I'm gonna love the button in this case, but you can see that it does work, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just I have to go back and forth a lot, so <laughs> I'm gonna update what I've done so far, and then now I can look at it live, which is gonna look exactly the same. So just so you know, like you, you should update quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to change this again uh, a few more times, <laughs> probably. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and update this for now, and then I can show you another way to look at your site. If you go to view page up here, you can see the page you've just done. So, okay, so the blue, all right. Um, and I hope you're not getting bored of me redoing this. I'm actually doing this so that you can see over and over too, you know, how to change things. And so I hope that helps. Um, you can go to edit page at the top when you're on the live page as well. And that works just as good. So... I think I'm just going to erase this all together and show you another option for adding a, a header, um, a title on this. If you go all the way down, actually let's take off this button as well. No more button. <laughs> um, in fact, let's change this too. I didn't really like the circle. Let's try maybe the arrow. Let's just update it and take a look real quick. I spend a lot of time on this just because it's like, well, okay, that's not even noticeable. So I spend a lot of time on this because it's the first thing people will see. You want it to look good. So this is probably the most important part. 
Um, anyway, so I'm going to fix this again. Okay. Update. Hopefully this will get you in a rhythm of, you know, what works for you, checking out the site. Definitely need something in the middle here. So I'm going to go back and I think the logo might look good. Um, I'll actually show you how to put the logo in here in case you want to put your logo as the main focal point. So I'll just show you how to do that. That's pretty cool. I think I'm going to end up doing that anyway. So if you scroll down and you'll see there's this logo image URL. So you can upload your logo, which we already have. So we can just click on it and you can adjust sizing on your computer as well if you want a bigger logo or smaller. Uh, mine's going to be big anyway. So if I preview it, oh, look at that. I like it. It looks nice. Simple and got a simple arrow here. Perfect. Okay. I actually think I like this finally. So now we're going to go back and we're going to add a standard section um, to make it snazzy and start building the page. So I'm just going to click standard section here and it's going to give me rows for options here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a half and half row. And if you ever want to change it, you can go here on um, this three little bars here and that will just allow you to change the rows to something different if you don't like what you've chosen. And what's cool is you can actually edit this whole bar here. If you click that, you can add images, background colors, background videos. I mean, the options are endless. So if you want to get fancy, you can do that. I'm going to skip that for now. I'll show you something at the end that you can do. If you click here, you can add a module like we did before, only you'll see the options are much more and they're a lot different. For us, I think I'm going to do, mm, let's see. Uh, I think these circle counter things up here are actually pretty cool, but I'm going to actually change my rows if I do that, and I'm going to make it three rows instead of two. That way I can have three different counters. So I'm just going to click there, and then I'm going to add my counter. You might want to use different modules, but I'm going to use this just for my site. Um, you can actually view what the modules look like and preview everything with this little eye down here. It shows you what this little module is going to look like, and you can even change the screen size from tablet up here to uh, phone. It's really cool. And then you just exit, and it goes back to your editor, so it's pretty awesome. Um, and so let's see. What do I want to do? I don't want percentages. I just want it to count for me. Number, let's say 50, and we'll do states because they're traveling, so that makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> so we'll do states, and then let's change it to that blue to match our theme. And that'll be the color of the little circle bar. And then here you can actually change what the title is of this module. So if we change it to counter states, it says it'll change the label of the module on the builder. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. So if I preview it, oh, look at that. Looks cool. Um, I don't think I like the states. I think I'm going to actually get rid of the title and do it a different way. So let's exit that. And I'm going to go ahead and just go up and erase the title altogether, and then I'll save what I've done. And now you can see the counter states is what it says on the back end, so you actually understand what it means and what it is. If I add another module here, um, I'm going to go ahead and use a really common one that you'll use a lot is the text module. So in this text module, this one's actually really simple. I'm going to justify the text to center, and I'm going to actually add my text here of what I want to say below the circle counter. So in order to change the text sizing and different things, you're going to hit this toggle toolbar and that'll bring down this option where you can change it to like a header, a different size and everything. So I'm going to change it to heading three. And then I know it's already centered up here, but I like to do it visually as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use this align center. And then I'm going to save it. And now of course it's right there. There's our counter. And so there's the text that we just did. If I click on it, we can change it to say um, states so we know it's the states text. And then we'll save that. And so there it is. And let's go preview and see what it looks like. So we click the arrow, it will scroll down for us. And there it is. Not too shabby. I like it. I like how it looks. So we'll go ahead and go back and add a couple more to our site. So we have a little 
icon section. Now what's really cool about this is you can actually copy using this copy button and then drag if you're going to use the same module and then that way you can just edit simple things. So it's really cool. That's one of my favorite features to make it easy. So I'm going to copy again and I'm going to just put them in these rows here and then I'm going to go in and actually change of course the numbering and the titles. So let's change this to like three, how many thousand miles will they travel? I don't know. Oh, 3,000? Oh no. Okay. Sorry. It looks like you can only use zero to a hundred. So hmm. I'm actually going to change my approach a little bit then if, if I can only do that. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this as states. And I'm going to just, sorry, I'm thinking here. <laughs> I'm going to exit this, leave as, as states. Oops. Okay. I'm going to leave it as states and go in here and just change this to maybe like five. There's only five of them. So we'll just do five of the friends and save it. Then I'll change my text to say friends text, and then we'll say something about them being five friends. So we are we are five friends. Save that. Okay, I'm gonna leave this next one as states here, and then I'm gonna I guess I'll leave that as well. Change that period. Capitalize? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> States looks like a weird word when you're staring at it. All right. And then we're going to go here and we're going to change this to, let's think. What could we do? One more thing. How about we change it to 100 and say something about it being like 100 tanks of gas or something. So I'll write here, I'll write gas. And then of course I got to change this to something about using tanks of gas. Um, filled 100 tanks of gas. And I'm going to change this to gas so I know what it is. And I'm going to save it. Voila, there we go. We're going to update it and then we're going to go check out what it looks like. So I'm going to open a new tab so I don't have to go back and forth. Let's see. Scroll down. Very cool. Here are my awesome text blocks with my awesome counters. And I like how they turned out. So just add something cool, some pizzazz to the home page. So I can also make this bar full width and it's also responsive. So it makes it really nice that it automatically does that for you in Divi. I just love that. And most WordPress themes nowadays will do that for you. So. Okay, I'm going to add another standard section now, and I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, do full width. Okay, so then I'm going to insert my module, and I'm going to go ahead and just do an image and text in a text block to make it really simple. So if I go to text, and then I can go um, to the top here and go to add media, and then I'm going to upload my files. I'm going to go ahead and upload a few of my images I already have here. So I'm just going to select these three and open those. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the image of this girl here and I'm going to go ahead and you can change the sizing here, but I'm going to show you a better way I like to do it. So let's just uh, leave medium for now and then I'll go ahead and insert it into the page. Now to change it to custom sizing is what I like to do. If you go to this pencil after clicking on it, you can actually edit it and go to custom size. You can change it to full size or you can change it to custom. Um, I'll use maybe 500 in this case. So I'm going to update it and now it should be updated. Okay, so there's my image and now I'm going to add some text here. Now sometimes when you're working you want to add filler text and lorimipsum.com has some lorem ipsum for you. You can just Google it. There's tons of different ipsums out there, bacon, all these weird ones. Um, but this is filler text. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and use it throughout my site before I know what I'm going to actually put on my site. So it comes in handy. 
So I'm going to go ahead and first make a heading for my um, text block here. Uh, okay. I think I'm just going to add text in here instead. So we'll say, why do we travel? And then I'll go ahead and paste my lorem ipsum. I'm going to select it and do my media again. Let's try full size this time. Obviously too big, so I'm going to go edit it and change the sizing. 500. Okay, let's see how this aligns. Um, I don't really like this big thing it's doing. If I, if I look at the preview, yeah, not really working out for me. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take off that image again, and I'm just going to make it into two rows. So we're going to kind of start this over. Again, this is the home page. I'll probably spend more on this than any other page, and you will too. So here's the half and half. I'm going to do that. And like I said, you can edit the entire row here. If I wanted to do like some cool background image effect, which I'll show you at the end that you can do, it's really popular right now, um, I could do that. And there's even custom CSS you can add, which, anyway. But what I really want to do is I want to make this full width. So I can even make a standard row full width if I wanted to. So that's pretty cool. So I can hit yes, and then now it'll stretch across the entire screen, which is awesome. So I think this will look better. I'm going to choose an image, and I'm going to go ahead and upload that image of the girl that I was going to use. And then I don't think I need to fill out any of this. If you want to link it somewhere, you can. There's an animation option here. I'll go ahead and leave the left to right, but you'll see there's a lot of different animations you can do, or you can disable it. So that's pretty awesome if you like a little animation. I'm going to align it in the center, and... I'm going to leave it as image. So we'll save that. Now I'm going to insert that text into a text block next to the image. So it kind of looks more fancy. So if I add my heading again. And then I'm going to add my lorem ipsum. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then we can preview it and see what it looks like. Oh, let me. Okay. And center. Again, OCD over here. Okay, so save it, and then I'm going to go ahead and see what it looks like on my page. So preview, and scroll down. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. Got an image, got my text. Um, it is responsive, as I like to show, which is cool. But let's see. When it is full, I don't really like the empty space that it has under here. So I think I need some variation from the top as well. Maybe a background. So I'm going to go back and edit the page. You can click there or you can go back. Actually, I didn't update it, so don't do that. <laughs> Just go back to where you were if you were previewing it. Um, so I can change the background color of this so it actually pops more. So the counter row, I'm going to make like a lighter gray so it has more of a pop from the other row. So let's look and see how that looks. Okay, so now it has like some differ differentiation, which I think looks good. And now I can add some extra text underneath here. Okay, so I think I'm going to copy these and go ahead and just change the title since I already have lorem ipsum. So let's change this to where do we travel? And we'll change the other one to um, how do we? Okay. All right, so now we can see that I have some extra text here. I think it'll look better. Let's go check it out. Again, you'll go back and forth all the time if you're anything like me. Just want to make it look as perfect as possible. So, cool. So now that looks good. And now it fills up the space. And I can still shrink it, shrink it, shrink it. And have plenty of text to read underneath there. So awesome. Um, so I'm liking it. So now we can keep going and create more for the home page. I think I'm going to create one more section for you to see. Don't forget to update. <laughs> okay, now I've updated and I'm going to go ahead and go and create another standard section that's full width here. So I'm going to do that and I just want to show you too, after I make this full width, that you, um, you actually... You know, like I said, you don't want to use the full width section all the time. 
That's really only for headers when I use it because if you look at the modules again, there's not that many options here. You can't do a lot with that. Um, so when you use the standard section, you can make it full width but still have all these modules, which I kind of talked about. So just to remind you, always best to use that if you can. So I actually want the background color to match. So I'm going to copy this background color from above and that way our bars will match. So I can copy and paste that into the new row that I've just created the same exact way. And I could have even copied the row. You can even copy whole rows. That's how awesome it is. So I think I'm going to go ahead and insert a um, contact form. So this isn't contact form 7, but I'll show you that later. This is actually Divi's form, and it's actually pretty good. So the CAPTCHA, we're going to disable that. That's kind of like, you know, to show that they're not robots. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Make it full width. Save that. If you go in and edit each individual section, want to make them all full width, you can do that. You can change the titles, everything. I'm just keeping this really simple here. Okay. And then email, you definitely want to put the email where you want these form fill-outs to go. So I'm going to do us at thetravelingcrew.com. Okay, and then you can title your contact form, whatever you want. So I'll do, hey, let's talk, something cool. Um, and then this uh, I'm going to leave alone, keep it simple for you. You can do um, another page if you want to direct them to, but I'm just going to do a message that kind of says, thanks for filling out the form. So I'm going to write that in. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to save it. Actually, I'm going to change some of the colors first. So let's see. Mm, title font will be defaulted to my header font, which is Montserrat. So I think I'm okay. I just want to change the button because the buttons are important. I want them to look snazzy. So again, we did this before. So if you want to follow along, this is exactly what we did with our other buttons. We just kind of changed the colors, changed the size, texting, everything. So... Okay, so now I'm going to save it, and I'm going to go ahead and preview and see what the contact form looks like. Let's check it out. Scroll down. Got my cool bars here. Okay, here's my contact form and my cool button. All right, doesn't look too bad. Um, I think I want to make it pop a little more, so I'm going to go back and go ahead and make that pop. I'm going to go in here, and I, I can change the form colors. So I'm going to go to Advance, and I'm going to go Form Background Color. Oh, I was just there. Oh, yeah, it's at the top. <laughs> okay, I'm going to change it to white so it really pops against the gray background here. And then I'm going to go ahead and save it. And again, you can customize to no end if you want. I'm just keeping it simple. So if you scroll all the way down, it should, there you go. Gives it a little pop, matches the button, and all right. I'm loving it. Time to go back and make sure that I update these changes so that I can keep them and make sure that they don't go anywhere. So I'm going to update real quick. Okay, now it's updated. Perfect. Okay, so I'm looking at it again and I'm happy with how it looks so far. It's just a simple home page site here. So now we're going to go do the next page, the about page. So I'm going to click on that and I can go ahead and click edit page and it'll bring me to the back end. Actually, thinking about it, I'm just thinking this font up here and the font down here, it just looks a little small to me. I don't know if you feel that way. So if I go back here and I go to Theme Customizer, it's gonna bring up that Customizer tab there, and I can go ahead and change the general settings and the typography, and this is the part I didn't show you yet, but you can change the body text size here to be bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down so I get a live view. And I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger so you can read it. Let's make it, it's 
kind of big. Too small. Okay, just showing. So let's see. 16. Okay, I like 16. I think that looks better, more readable, definitely a better font size. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and also change the menu to be a bigger font size. So if I go to the header, uh, header elements, where is it? Primary menu bar. Okay. So now I can change the text size of the menu. So I'm going to change that to 16 as well. And no, let's not do that. Okay. So now it's bigger and I can save it there. I'm happy with that. I just want to change that and you'll probably change things as you go as well. So at least it's a little bigger now and a little easier to read. Perfect. Okay. Now we can go back to the about page and continue with our editing. Now I've already laid out the full width here, but I actually want to show you something really cool about um, this library that you can do. So if I go back to the home page, I'm probably just going to copy the header. So what I can actually do is save it to library and load from library. So let me show you exactly how it would work. So I can actually save this entire page if I wanted to save the layout and reuse it. But in this case, I just want to do a, this little module. So anytime you want to save it, you'll see this big blue button. You've probably noticed it. You can actually save any module that you want, any row that you want. It's pretty amazing. And then you can load it into your site. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this full width header so I can use it. I'm going to save and add to library and I'm going to call it header module. So that way I can save and reuse it on all my pages if I want. Go ahead and update. And then if I go back to my Divi library, I just want to show you where they're all located. If you go to Divi and Divi library, you'll see all the things you've saved are in this library. So just in case you want to know. So it's pretty awesome. Now if I go back to my about page that I'm working on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load that module. It saves me tons of time. Now here would be a predefined layout. This is something different. So these are ones that Divi already gives you if you want to just fill in stuff. So if I wanted to do an about us page that already existed and hit load, here's this beautiful layout that they've already given me and I can preview it and show you what it looks like. It's really clean cut, really nice looking. I mean, there you go. All I'd have to do is fill in the information, but it doesn't really fit what I'm trying to show you. So I just wanted to clear that and make sure that you knew that that was a possibility. I'm going to go back to adding my full width section here. And if I click on the module, instead of that, I can go to add from library and then you'll see there's my header module, the one I saved. So now I have that loaded in here. I can exit my standard section above. And now I can go ahead and edit it. So I got to edit it to be different from my home page. So I'm going to change the image first. I'll make it the same one that I use on the home page for now. Set the image. I'm going to leave the overlay. I'm going to remove the logo URL. I don't want that. And I'm going to add a different title. So I'll add about us. That way, you know, it's the about us page. I can change the design settings change the color as we've been doing, all the things I want to change. I'm going to leave it blue and I'm just going to keep it the way it is right now. And let's see what else. Um, oh, I don't want it full width. I just want it to be a little bar. So I'm going to make the full screen thing go away. I want it full width, not full screen. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> so if you go to preview changes, you'll see, oh cool, now it's just a little bar except we don't need that arrow because you'll be able to see the content. So I'm going to go back and take that arrow off as well. Okay, let's check it out. Oh, cool. I like it. Okay, so this will be on all my pages. I'm going to have a little bar with the picture. So awesome. Okay, I'm going to make this really simple. I'm going to add another section. And I'm just going to do a full width section um, with some basic information that you'd put on your about page. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a text module here. And I'm just going to make it really simple. I'm going to center it. I'm going to write a little title in here, letting people know what are we all about. And then of course I got to go and get my lorem ipsum. 
copy that and paste. Voila. There you have it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that and we can take a look. Always got to preview that. There you go. Simple little section. Not too shabby, nothing fancy. So that'll explain a little bit about us, what you want on your about page. And then let's see what else I could do. I'm going to add another section here and I'm actually going to add team members in here. First, I'll just show you. I'm going to do um, like a, there's five of them, so I'll do a third. And I'll add another row underneath that row, and I'll do two and two, and then probably put that above it. Um, so that whole section now has two two rows in it, and so I'm going to make the section blue so it has a, a background and kind of sets apart from the rest of the text, and save that. And so I'll show you real quick what that looks like. Make these full width. just because I like it. I'm going to make this one. Actually, I can do a custom width on here and it's cool. You can change the pixels. I like to do percentage. It's more responsive. And then I can actually like scale it down so the text is actually in a smaller looking row. So if we preview that, you'll see that um, the lorem ipsum text, it should be a little more squished. You see how that got a little bit smaller here, a little bit more um, compact so you can do all kinds of cool stuff on here I'm gonna do a, a team section of people how you would normally do on an about page if you have a company if you click person you can fill out their information here I'll just do some person named Lisa and show you how it's done I'm gonna skip the position and do an image pick this person I've already cropped this to be square so you'll want to do that as well with your images. Um, I'm gonna leave out animation. Here you can add URLs for their different social media. Like I said before, if you don't have any but you wanna see what it looks like, you can just add this hashtag and it'll show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then here I'm just gonna add a little lorem ipsum that talks about who they are. Or, I mean, it'll eventually talk about who they are. <laughs> right now it's just lorem ipsum, so. <clears throat> Okay, and I think I'm going to add a last name on here just so it looks a little more professional. And then I'm going to save it. Now I can go ahead and copy it and put it in all these different sections. I'm not going to do an individual person for each one because I think you get the idea. So I'm just going to copy and drag. And then, of course, you'd fill out as many people as you have, and that's how it would work. So um, here's my people. Now let's go check out what our team looks like on our About page. So we've got the information. Ooh, okay. Definitely needs some work. Can't really read the text. It's kind of a lot. I'm trying to picture it not being the same girl every picture. <laughs> but yeah, I do like the contrast. But yeah, I think it needs de definitely some lighter text here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and, of course, change that. I gotta exit all these. Sometimes you probably want to check before you copy them all. That was my mistake, but definitely do that. And here you can change it. You don't even have to change all the text. You can change it to light text, and then it will automatically change everything to be lighter. So I want to bold this as well so you can read it. Okay, let's check before we copy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, see, I don't like that the title is the same color. I do like the the links. I think they look okay. Um, yeah. I need to go mess with this again. And you'll do this multiple times, like I said. So just got to try it and see what you like. I'm going to change this text down here. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I'll just do it the manual way. So if I scroll all the way down, um, I can select all of this and just make it white. So first I'll just change this back to dark so the header is dark. And then I'll change all of this text to be white. So if I select all of it, make it shorter also. Make it white. You won't be able to see it, but it's there. So now I can go back and preview it. Okay. Yeah, I think this row itself just needs to be not full width because the image just doesn't look right. So if I go back and I change it to not be full width, I think it will look good.
Let's check that out. Okay, so now it's a little more aligned. I like it a little better. Um, let's do, okay. So now I can copy these. And actually, I just had a better idea. I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna go ahead and make this one blue. I think that'll look better. Again, you're walking through my brain steps as I design here, so I hope it's helping you think of new ways to design as well. And um, hopefully, let me change this back to normal. I can X that. I hope this um, just shows you a little bit more how to be more comfortable with designing. It is a lot of trial and error, and you know what? Eventually, you'll like what you do. So as I copy these, I hope that I end up liking this. <laughs> I'm not previewing. I'm just going to trust myself this time. Okay, let's take a look. Well, okay, obviously I forgot to change the bottom one to be white. So let me go back. Oh, I cleared it. You need to actually change it. Okay, so I'll save that. Leave that one blue. Make it light text. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Okay, I think that looks a lot better. Awesome. Okay, there you go. So there's your about page. There's your people. There's social icons. You got some information. I'm just going to keep it that simple. So I hope that that helps you. And don't forget to go back and update. Okay, perfect. All right, now we're going to go into the blog page. And I'm going to show you some things about the blog that you can do. If you want to go back to the theme customizer, there are some options here. If you go to blog, there's post options where you can change different aspects of the posts. Uh, I'm going to leave it for now. You can also go to, like I said, the static front page and make your post page the blog page. There's a sample post. Um, but again, I'm not going to do that because Divi has its own way of doing blogs that I'm going to show you that's really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and save and go back and I'm going to actually do some posts for you. So that way you can, you know, see what it's all about. So I'm going to go to new post here and I'm just going to fill in some tester posts for you. So I'm going to write tester post. And then I'm going to go ahead and here you can, is where you can change the sidebar if you want. And then there's all these different options. So first off, you want to make sure you have categories. I'm going to just do like a test category. If you don't do one, um, they will default to the cat uncategorized. So you don't want that. It won't look nice. These are tags for SEO mostly if you want to use tags or for organization purposes and taxonomy. Image you definitely want. It makes your blog stand out. I'm just going to use one of my stock images here. And then I'm going to fill in some lorem ipsum as the post here. Copy that and paste it. Okay. And something I want to show you is this excerpt section below. I'm going to copy and paste um, just like a sentence into it. And that is so that you can control what is in the excerpt and you can customize it versus the automatic way that WordPress does it. So it's a little bit nicer, helps it look cleaner. And I'm going to go ahead and publish that. And then we can go work on the blog page. So if you go to all posts, you can see all the different posts. I'm going to go ahead and delete Hello World. We don't need that one. So here's my tester post. Awesome. You can go to categories as well. It lists the categories here and you can add them here. Uncategorize is default, so you can't delete it. So, okay, there's one post. So now we're going to go to our blog page and we're going to set it up using the Divi Builder, of course. And here it is. Now we have that other library module. Let's go back to the about page and actually save that header module because we're going to use that one on all the pages, not the home one. So if we go ahead and go down to save and add to library, this will be the channel. Well, no, let's do just the pages header. Okay. So this is the page header. We know that all the pages are going to have this header module. Update. 
Okay, great. So go back to pages and now we're going to go to blog and we're going to go ahead and insert that header module. So same thing here, add to library. Now we're going to do the small page header. Now all we need to change here is the title and the image. So here will be the blog page and then we'll scroll down and we'll add a new image here. So let's do these pretty palm trees. Okay, everything else I'm just going to leave the same because I want them to match. So then I can preview it and you should see exactly what you're looking for. Here's my little blog title page. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit and add a new section. So you're going to add a new section. You're going to do a full width section in this case if you want it. And I'm just going to show you what it does. So if you go in here and you add the blog module, that is how you can add in your blog posts. And it's really customizable. You can do a full width layout or a grid. I'll show you both. You can add the post numbers. You can, you can um, choose which categories to include. I'm going to choose tests in this case. Metadate, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> you can, you can um, disable it. Show the featured image for sure if you have one. Show the excerpt or the content. We're just going to show the excerpt. And you can show a read more button, which I like to do. And here's where you can disable different things. I'm going to disable the author and the categories. Yeah, let's just disable that. And the pagination will disable as well. And okay, so I'll show you what that looks like real quick. You can also change different colors of things in here, just like normal. You know, it's all laid out the same, so it's really easy to use. So we'll save that and we'll go ahead and preview and see what that looks like. So here we go. Here's our blog post, tester post. Has a read more link here and if we have a little excerpt. So if we click on any portion of this, you know, on our blog, we can click this and it'll take us to the full blog post where people can read and comment and all that jazz. So I'll show you now what the grid would look like. Um, if we do a grid and actually I need to do more posts for the grid to matter. So let's update this for now and I'm going to go ahead and do a few more filler posts but you can see here that's how the grid will look. So I like it. I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple more posts so that it looks nicer. So bear with me as I do this and hopefully you can follow along. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and publish this now and go see what it looks like with these two posts that I have real quick. So I'm going to go to my site and go to blog. Okay, so that's what it looks like with two. I'm going to do one more because I'm OCD. But here's what it would look like. So same thing. And of course you can add more text and images and make it more fancy if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and add something else so it looks a little bit more full. Okay, let's go check it out and see what it looks like. Nice, okay. There's how it looks. I think I probably want to change maybe some styling. So let's change the background and edit the page. 
So now I'm just going to go and I'm going to edit this background color to be blue. And let's just check that out and see how it looks. Okay, that's cool. I like that. It kind of makes it pop. So that's a really simple way to do the blog. I'm going to go ahead and update it. And like I said, you can mess around with it and do different blog posts. But that's what I'm going to do for now. And now we're going to do our last page, which is the contact page, which is one of the most fun ones. So, of course, we're going to go up and edit our page and begin working on that. We're going to use the Divi Builder. And what do you think we're going to do next? Full width section, uh-huh, and insert module. And what kind of module are we going to insert? The library, the small page header. You got it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Change the title to be Contact Us. And we're going to change the image to be a different image that you want on the contact page. And of course, you may choose to totally design your site differently, but I hope this gives you a good overview of some of the features of Divi and designing a WordPress site. So let's check this out. Cool. I love it. Okay, so we got the friends with the background and the title. Simple as can be. So now I'm going to show you how to add a map. That's what's really popular. I'm going to do a full width map right underneath the image. So if you go to full width and you do a full width map, you simply type in the center address where you want the map to be centered. So for this case, I'm just going to use Laguna Beach, California. So it'll find that area and show that on the map. And then when you want to add a pin, that's where your location will be. So you can add the address of the pin, which I'll just do this address in Laguna Beach. And then you're going to save it. You can title it if you want. And it's really simple. You can scroll in and out with your mouse, and people will be able to do that as well. If you scroll and move around, you've probably seen this before. You can change it if you don't want it to, to zoom. Well, it is zooming, but that'll be for other people. And then you can preview what that full width map will look like underneath. So there you go. There's the full width map if you want people to see your location. But I don't really like the full width. Um, personally, I think it's too big too large. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it a smaller map. I'll show you how to do that as well. So we're going to delete this and we're just going to add a standard section with, um, let's see, maybe like three fourths or two thirds. Let's do two thirds. Okay, so now I'm going to do my map in the two thirds section instead. So that's also in the standard section options. There's a map option and it's going to be set up the same exact way. So you're going to type in the center address again. And of course, add a pin where your location will be. And you can add a title. I don't really want one. But you could say like, our place. And then save. Okay. Now here you go. Save that. And then on the side, you, sometimes people want to add like a little bit of contact information. So I'll show you how to do that as well. But this is what the map would look like. So I think it looks better, smaller. That's just my personal opinion um, in this case. And so I'm going to leave it small. Then I'm going to go ahead and just change where it's zoomed. Let's see if that works. Okay. And then I'm going to make it full width just to give it more range here. Okay, now we're going to insert a text module with just some basic information about this group or whatever your site is. I'm going to say, let's see, we're going to do an address again. That's pretty common. So we'll just paste in that address. And then a phone number is also pretty common. So we'll write a phone number in here. So I'll just make one up real quick. I'm actually going to put it above the above the address. I don't really like it on the bottom, so let's put that above. And WordPress sometimes gives you this weird space. If you want to fix that, you just go to the text tab at the top right, and you backspace, and then you go back to visual, and it will be dismissed. But you can't do that on the visual. It's just a weird thing. Um, and if you want the 
number to be clickable and you click link here, you write in um, TEL for telephone and then colon plus and then the phone number and it actually will turn it into a clickable link. So for mobile, you'll be able to click on it and call the person. So it's really nice. Okay, and then also, obviously, an email is important too. So I'll put their email here. Oops, that's a habit. <laughs> Dot com. Okay, and then I'm going to copy that and also link it. And it'll automatically link it so that when you click that, you can email. Makes it really nice. Let's remove this space again here in the text area. Okay, and let's go ahead and save. And let's check out what it looks like next to the map. Okay, so there's the information and there's the map. So it looks good, a lot of space. So we're probably gonna put a um, contact form seven right underneath it. So let's go ahead and do that. If you um, First let's update and then I'll go and show you how to use contact form seven, which we installed earlier in our plugins, if you can remember. So you go to contact here and it'll bring up the default form, which you can use. So I'll go ahead and edit this default form now you'll see it has the form section, it already has these sections in it. So these are basic that a lot of people use. So I'm gonna leave it this way, just so we can keep it simple. Um, this will be where you control your email and what your email looks like by putting those short codes in. And it'll show you that it's from the website. So I'm going to change the email to be our little fake email for the traveling crew here. And that's where it's going to be sent to. And then messages. This is how you can control what it says. So you can control. I just usually change maybe the message when it's successful. So I'll change it to something a little bit cooler here. And then there's um, additional settings which you can ignore. And then I'm going to go ahead and just save it as is. So let's leave it at that. And there's all those other options as well at the top. And then once you do that, you copy the short code and you paste it into your widget. So we're going to copy. Um, sorry, not widget in this case. We're going to paste it into our Divi module. So we're going to go back to the contact page to edit after we've copied that. And then we're going to go ahead and insert a new text module where we can insert that code that we just copied. So you go to text. Actually, I can put it in the text block that we already have. <laughs> Make it a little bit easier. So go back to visual and I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, perfect. So now let's save and take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so there's your very basic contact form. Kind of an ugly button. I don't like the way that it pulls in the contact form 7 in this theme in particular. So I'm going to use the Divi theme contact form instead. Um, and let's see. Split it up a little bit. Uh, it still doesn't stretch it out. So yeah, you can use it in multiple themes. I don't personally like how it's pulling in on this theme. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that from here. But that's how you use a contact form 7. It's pretty simple, and you can mess with that as well on your own. So let's go ahead and add a contact form from Divi because we know we like it, and we already used it on the home page. So if you remember, we're just going to write in our email, and I'm going to leave everything else pretty much the same here. Title, I'll add a title. And of course, a success message that you can change once they actually send you the form. And we'll leave that. Okay, now let's see how it looks with the Divi form. Cool, okay, I like the Divi form a lot better. Has the little, oh, we forgot to change the button, but it has all the information we need. And see if you click on this, it'll try to call someone, so. Just want to show you that these work. Same thing with the mail. Let's go ahead and go back and edit our button style so we can have a cooler button as well. But I do like that form a little better. So I'm going to go to advanced design settings and I'm going to go down to where I can fix the button yet again and we're going to design a little button here. Text color, okay. 
So you've seen me do this multiple times, so hopefully you've got it down and you can see the steps to take it when you're editing the buttons. All right, okay, let's save that and then we're gonna go check it out. There we go, looks a lot better. Oh, my border didn't show up. I gotta go fix the border. Okay, save and let's check it out. There we go. Now we have a little border for the button and it looks good. I like it. And of course it's responsive, which is cool. I like that a lot. Okay, perfect. So now we have our information and everything we need. Now we want to go back and make sure that we update it, of course. Actually, I think I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a full width image just to give it a little something something on this page. So let me add just like a picture just to show you what you can do. Let me add this bonfire picture. Okay, I'm going to leave everything else. Uh, I'm not going to do any animations here. Okay, I'm just going to leave the rest. Save that and check out what that looks like just to give it a little bit more design. Okay. Okay, cool. So now there's like this big image at the bottom. It kind of pulls it all together. You know, I could, I would go and crop this probably, but um, as for right now, I'm just going to leave it just to show. But now, you, you know, it's, it has a little bit something more. You can even add text across this. Um, so yeah, I like that. I think it I think it's cool for people that want to scroll down. So let's go ahead and um uh, okay. Um okay. Never mind. Let's ignore that stuff. All right, so we'll save it and now we'll update our page. So then our contact page should be done. Except it's not cuz I'm going to change this one more time. <laughs> You're probably so sick of me changing things, but okay, let's check out our whole site now. So let's go back to the live site. And okay, so here's the home page we started with, the counters. We've got the text here, and we've got a little contact form. And then the about page, we've got a little information. We've got our people, smooth and clean, okay. And then our blog, of course, is really simple with our blog posts when you click on it sends you to the full post. And then we've got our contact page, which gives us our map, our information, our contact form, and our cool little image at the bottom. So something I wanna show you is about the search. Say I'm gonna search like test, which is what all my blogs are called, right? So it brings up this list, but unfortunately it also has this not so sightly sidebar. So we can actually change that and get rid of it. This is where we go to our widgets here. And widgets are cool if you wanna use them, but I'm just gonna take off everything here just so I don't have to look at the all that sidebar stuff. And you can keep some of the information if you want. There's a lot of things you can put in there. I'm just gonna get rid of it. Okay. So now I'm gonna search again and that sidebar should be gone. And there it is, disappeared. So that looks a little cleaner for people when they search. Um, I'm gonna show you one other feature that's really cool. It's called the parallax feature. And I'm gonna change up this whole row and show you how that works. It's when you make an image, the background. And you probably have seen this on a lot of really popular sites right now. So I'm gonna show you how that's done so you can use that on your own site. So I'm gonna delete everything I did here. I know it's sad. 
but we're just going to erase it all. Probably keep the text blocks. Yeah, we'll keep a couple text blocks and then um, I'll go ahead and make this full width and then go to the options here and make that full width. One row. Okay. Now we're going to change the settings to be a background image. So we're going to make that girl actually be our image background. And then we're going to go ahead and use the parallax effect on here. So you're going to turn that to yes. And yeah, so when you scroll, you'll see this really cool thing that it does. And you'll probably want to make the text have a background so that you can actually see it. So we're going to change the background color of that row to be like a white, like a light white color because we want to be able to see the image. So make it transparent. Okay, so let's show you what the parallax does. Okay, so look at this cool feature. So now you have this image in the background and you can scroll with your text over top. And of course you can't read it very well, which we'll fix, but now it has this cool scroll feature and that's what the parallax does. It just adds a little pizzazz to your site and it's a really modern um, creative tool to use. So I'm going to go ahead and just make it more readable. Maybe I'll change this color. Okay, now I can change that back to white. Mm, okay, we'll copy that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a second parallax just to show you another cool design. So this is another parallax row here, has the same information. So there's one and there's two. Cool, huh? Um, I don't really like that they're right next to each other though. Um, and I don't like the font not being readable. So those are two things we're going to fix about this feature right now. But it's really cool that you can scroll through and have that background. So let's split it up. Um, first things first, let's change the font. Be black. Then you should be able to read it. Okay, one more time. I'm doing this the tedious way, but hopefully that will show you how to change color quickly. Okay, so now it'll be black and you'll be able to read it better. Um, we'll not make it full width. Okay. So now you have the parallax, but then you also have this, which is not full width, which brings it all together a little bit better. Um, and so I like that more. It's still a little bit hard to read, but we're just doing this for the parallax feature so you can see. So we'll disable the full width, and then we'll add that other section in between so it's not, you know, one image after the other. So I'm just going to copy this and pull it down here. We'll just add another section real quick. All right, so we'll just do something really simple. Let's just add some text and an image, just like we did before. So let's go ahead and add in maybe a blurb. Okay, let's add a blurb. Yeah, mm, yeah, okay. If we do a blurb, it's kind of similar to text. Um, just want to just shake it up a little bit so you're not bored. So what we're up to, um, URL, we don't need that, icon, no, image, no, we don't want one for now. Let's do, let's just fill in some lorem ipsum. All right. I know you guessed it, right? So we'll copy some of that. Um, okay. So I have a little blurb, so let's just see what that looks like now that it's separated from the parallax. Okay, cool. So that looks kind of cool. Just a little different section to separate the two. Now I'll just add like an image or something on this side. So image, upload, add this girl. Okay. No animation. Uh, let's fade. We'll do a fade animation. Just for kicks. Okay. 
So now we have a different section to separate the two. We'll update it and then we'll go check it out and see if you like it. Dun, da, da, da. All right, here's our site with our parallax feature. And of course it's responsive, which is always a help when you're designing a new site. You don't have to worry about that. Um, so I think just one thing I want to, mm, sorry, I'm so picky. <laughs> I think I just want to flip around two images real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back. And before I update, I'm going to fix uh, these two images and flip them around. So let's just put the blurb over here and the image over here and update that. And our site will be done. So we hope you liked this video. And if you did, give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave a comment, leave a question, show us your work. We'd love to see it. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Good luck designing your WordPress site.